Good morning. I thank God for bringing us this morning. May God's name be praised. Actually, I wanted to come in the night, but I want to believe this is the perfect time. So after my night, um, I mean, going around social media to pray. <laughs> so I knew I needed to do personal prayers. Usually, I supposed to come for the podcast before the prayers, but uh, they all felt I should do the personal prayer, so I did it into the time I slept, and um, I woke up to finish to continue. So I just completed it now, and I'm here. So I believe I'm still, I'm still online. <laughs> But hopefully tonight I'll be able to do it in the night. Because love is when I can finish everything in in a day. Because that's what God wants me to be doing. Like everything I'm doing, I should be doing them daily. So I need God's grace. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We bless your name. Thank you for another day in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for the grace to be here again. It's by your grace we are not consumed, O Lord. Please be glorified. Please be magnified in the name of Jesus. Father, accept our praises. O God, accept our thanks. Oh, my Father, we are here to listen to your word again. God, please speak to us. Father, have your way. Open our understanding. Let the word of God speak to the right part in our hearts. Let it do what you are sending it out to do. Don't let it become uh, a snare to us. Don't let it become a stumbling block to us. Don't let it become sin to us. Let it heal our hearts. Let it encourage us. Let it bless us. And let it do the best for us, not taking us away from you. But let it bring us closer to you. In the name of Jesus. Forgive every sin, O Lord, that will not allow you to use us for your glory in the name of Jesus. And help us, Father, this is an encouragement word. Father, help us to be encouraged in this world that everything is is, is anyhow. Father, Lord, we need your encouragement. Father, encourage us. So that's more than what the enemy or the devil is throwing out, we can... Stand firm on your promise in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. Fill me with the power of God. Speak through me, O oh Lord. And also let the Holy Spirit speak to people that in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. We thank God. For this grace of this word of God. You know, I really enjoy it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I enjoy it so much. Especially yesterday that I was able to share the other ones I've done for some months ago. And I couldn't share on Audio Mark and YouTube. So I was so glad that yesterday I was sharing them. And I was listening to them at the same time. I see that they are just very timely. You see, that is one of the things that God does when you surrender yourself to him. Whatever you say will always be timely. You will not be one of these uh, pastors that are just looking for what to feed their stomach. They are just always after prophecies of all the time. But the word of God will last any time. Anytime you are ready to listen to the truth, you take it up again, you listen to it, you are blessed. That is the word of God. So, I'm encouraging anyone to, you can also devote yourself to God, to be used by God. It's not easy, but it's profitable. It's rewarding. It's, um, it's peaceful. So, let's all do the work of God together. Why not? So devote yourself so that God can use your words to be like fire. So that God can use your words to be like um, healing for people. 
so that God can use your word to to make people be on the right path. You know, it's there are a lot of things attacking the youth nowadays that doesn't want the youth to do the right things. I think that was why God had to make me go through the experience. I can tell you that I went through almost everything people go through and and mess up. But by the grace of God, I went through it and I came out victorious. That is why these things are strong in my mouth. I can say it boldly. I'm not saying it because I, I thought about it. I'm not saying them because I read about them. I'm saying them because I experienced them and I overcame. So, it means if we devote ourselves to God, we also we can be salt in people's life like that. People will only say, eh, we want entertainment, we want entertainment. But I'm telling you, there are times that people want encouraging words. I have had experiences where the only thing I needed at that time was encouragement. So, which means I know that there are times people go through situations that the only thing they need is the truth. And entertainment will not even be able to do anything at that time. They just need the word that is seasoned with the, with the spirit of God, with the salt of the spirit, with healing. And when they hear it, that's all. That is all they need. And they are moving on. You understand? You know, in my own case, too, I, I, I said it yesterday that I, I'm always careful not to grieve the Holy Spirit. You know, when everyone around you, no one wants to encourage you. So, I make sure that my relationship with the Holy Spirit doesn't spoil. So, if somebody hears it now and say, Ah, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, okay. That person too will say, Okay, me too, I'm not grieved with the Holy Spirit. So that in encouragement time, in times that things are difficult, things that situation, the situation that is supposed to make someone depressed, you know, the Holy Spirit will be there to comfort you. And then you'll be able to move on again. You'll be able to see beauty in even where people say there is nothing. You understand? So today, congratulations to those that survived yesterday's, <laughs> yesterday's message. Yesterday's message was judgment. Today, the Lord has sent another message. Today, we suit your soul. But at the same time, it will also remind you of the of the word of God. So today's message is their strength shall be renewed. Their strength shall be renewed. I knew what God wanted me to say, but I didn't know which topic to give you. I was like, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Ah, that's too that was too much. I went again. Um, the young shall shall not weary. Ah, I was just thinking of the until close to coming in, the Lord will say, okay, pick their strength shall be renewed. So today God is encouraging us again to wait on him. Some people will say, ah, I've been waiting on the Lord, I've been waiting on the Lord, and he didn't do anything. And he didn't do anything. And things have gone worse. Things have gone bad. Now, the question is, are you really waiting on the Lord? Because this promise is for those that are actually waiting on the Lord. If you are doing one leg in the world, one leg in the house of God, when I say house of God, I mean doing the things of God. So it's not as if you are always sleeping in the church. I don't mean you are always sleeping in the church. Like one leg in worldly things, one leg in saying I'm waiting on the Lord, you know? You are confusing yourself because you can't confuse God. And minus times plus is always minus. That means you are not waiting on the Lord at all. In God's calculation, you are not waiting on the Lord. If you are waiting on the Lord and you are still trying to do things that the eyes of God is hungry at. You see some people online. Sorry to use this example. You know, there was one man that He's always flaunting his uh, riches online. 
and you say God has done it, it was a motivational speaker. Sorry, I'm so sorry, I know it's sensitive, sorry. And then later on they found out that he's a kidnapper, you know? Like that person now, maybe you usually go to church, you will go and spend that money in the church. They will say, ah, our well, benefactor has come. You understand? Only Duruwa, he has come. You see that kind of situation? Whereas, it's, it's just it's one leg in the house of God, one leg in the worldly things that is sinful. You see? God didn't recognize him. That one is not waiting on the Lord. So today the Lord is talking to people that are truly waiting on the Lord. When we say waiting on the Lord, it means when they give you options that are sinful, you will say no. This statement that they say, uh, uh, God's time is the best. Let me explain it to you. Most times it doesn't mean that Every time, whatever God has for you should take to come at a very long time. No. What it's just trying to say is that the time that the options that are coming are not sinful. That is the God's time. If the, option, if the options that are still coming for you now, they are still sinful, you are not yet in God's time. That means you will still continue to wait and continue to pray. Father, Lord, come and bring options that are that will glorify your name. They are offering you jobs. Some they will say, come and do photo shoot where you will reveal your nakedness. You should know that is not God's, God's option. And I've discussed, heaven does not help those who help themselves. Heaven helps those who cannot help themselves. I will, I will, I'm still sharing the the old podcast. So it's part of the topic. I will share it by God's grace. For Audio Mac and YouTube people and Peonia. Is it Peonia they call it call it? Patron and Patron. <laughs> you understand? So everyone does not have those who help themselves. So don't look at it as oh this is a good option. The devil will speak to you. I'm telling you, if not that I went through these things, I will not be able to say it. You know, God wanted to, just like I, uh, Joseph and Job, God wanted to use my life as an example that it is possible to go through these things and not fail God. You know, I said it yesterday. Maybe I said it, maybe it's one of the podcasts I shared. That, that was the sin of Moses. That was his only sin. God wanted to show him off to the Israelites that, see you, Look at how you people you are behaving. Do you see this man? How he didn't misbehave with you? How he didn't mumble? How he didn't uh, follow what you people are doing? If God wanted to show him off, you know, every time God will say he will destroy Israel and raise a new generation from Moses. That was how much God trusted him. But he failed. He failed by that. Murmuring. That statement was like murmur, Like, okay, we are going to bring you water. Is it him that has been bringing water from the Israelites? It's God that has been bringing water for the Israelites. So, even we as children of God, that's, that God is using us, we have to be very careful of our statements. You know, that whole statement, um, that podcast I shared, I said, feed my sheep. God is just giving us assignment to just feed the sheep. It's not us that owns the sheep. You understand, we are just doing the work of God to make sure that the people that God has given us, they are fine. Very soon now, I know that people will start uh, coming to my church. <laughs> Amen, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. You understand? And these people, many of them will be coming with a lot of burdens. I've noticed it. Most times when I'm online nowadays, I don't... Some people may not people may not be online, but anytime somebody comes online, oh my god, I feel it in my spirit. Even if I'm I'm closing my eyes, like when I was on Facebook yesterday, I just felt it. I opened my eyes, saw that someone was online. Ah, I said I need more powers, more powers in the spirit of God. 
Because you see, only one person that will be coming to my church. People will be coming now. Many of them will be coming with burdens. So that I can be able to just do the work of God, give out what God is sending me out to give people, and then I'm still able to renew that strength. How do I call it? Renew the energy. You know? I'm telling you, people that are, that are suffering one thing or the other, they drain energy. I experienced this a few weeks ago. You know, I had to stay away from the, from the guy. He was, he was sick and like mentally, you understand? Sorry to use the example. And then I got close to him and God healed him, you know? Then the energy started bringing out to me. I was expecting him to be grateful. He was always saying he was going to beat me. He was going to slap me. I had to move away. You understand? I just believe that I finished what God wanted me to do. I had to go and fast to gain back my energy again. My peaceful energy. You understand? So that's it. So you will meet a lot of people. Some will even not appreciate what you have done for them. But at least some virtues have gone out of you to, to do the work of God. It's the same with Jesus. Jesus was always with the Israelites. Even when people that were foreigners came to him, he said, ah, I am sent I am sent to the house of Jacob. For now, I am still sent to the house of Jacob. It was when his people did not receive him. That's when he, he started... He said, as many that receive him, he has given them the power to become sons and daughters of God. You see, Jesus was always with them. And that's why he laid the cause. That even on the last day, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, they will, they will judge them. Because Sodom and Gomorrah, if they have preached the little they preached in their land, maybe they would have been saved. You understand? So what is he trying to say? I'm trying to say that we need the power of God, number one. Then we need the feeling of the Holy Spirit. So and at the same time, I'm also talking about Moses, that um, God wanted to use him in the best way, because he wanted to show him forth. And then he, he messed up, and that was his sin. So... And what I was trying to explain from there by bringing my own example was that the things, when you are a child of God, that God is using you as a shepherd. Let me call it shepherd. Because I already see myself as a shepherd now. When God sees you as a shepherd, when God is using you as a shepherd to care for the sheep, you see, you have to be careful. Many of those church members, it's not that they want to hurt you intentionally. It's the demon in them. Some of them is demon that is in them. Some of them is, is evil. You know, people that are depressed. Do you know what it means to be depressed? That is a very demonic demon, a very terrible demon. Someone that is depressed cannot give you good energy. So it's sure that you will continue to pray, Father, strengthen me in the spirit, refill me with the power of God. So that you don't, the energy doesn't drain you to the point that you will sin against God. So may God help us. So today we are discussing, they that wait on the Lord, the Lord shall renew their strength. And the topic, the word we are using out of it is, their strength shall be renewed. What does it mean? It will never be weary. People will say, oh, look at her. Ah, why is your situation like this? They'll be looking at you from afar. Ah. I think she is going to break now. I think she's going to break down now. I think she's going to feel it. I think she's going to suffer now. And they will always see you rising. You will never fall. That is the meaning of that statement. Their strength shall be renewed. Every time, your strength shall be renewed. Look at even people that waited on the Lord in the Bible, that were serving the Lord truthfully, like that Moses. The Lord, he was 120 years old. His eyes were not dim. His strength was not, was, did not fail. He was still as strong as, as a young man. The same with Joshua and Caleb. They were very strong, even in their old age. That is the promise of God. He said those that, that 
flourish in the house of God. He said they begin to flourish even until old age. You are wondering how if that is possible. It's possible. If God said it, it's possible. And we are seeing the examples in our days. We are seeing the examples among people that truthfully serve the Lord. You don't drink, you don't smoke, you don't um, uh, start doing fornication all about. So what will mess up your body? Nothing now. Nothing will mess up your body. So today again, that statement is talking to men. If you are still seen sleeping with different women as, uh, what was the English? Flex. It's not flex. So you are destroying the plan of God for your life. That means you are not allowing God to, to um, fulfill his world that your strength will be renewed. Your strength will not be renewed. Because you are sacrificing that your body to things that will not make it to be renewed. You see, there's a place in the Bible that says he that gives himself to pleasure is dead while he's alive. He used she in that place. For me, I can use she and he. I want to believe it's for women and men too. You understand? You give yourself to pleasure. It's not that they say you should be living in, in hardship. No. But what they are talking about, pleasure in that place, is those things that your, your, your eyes say that is pleasant. Those things are very dangerous. You are the one that wants to drink uh, 20 bottles of, of beer, or you are seeing NSC because they are expensive, all those ones. You are calling it flex. You are the ones that go to club and spend millions in the club in one night. You are the one that God is talking about, that is dead while he's alive. Because those things will not uh, do any good for you. You think it's, it's just to enjoy your body. Okay. That was the meaning of that enjoyment and um, pleasure that the Bible was talking about. You think it's pleasurable. You think when you sleep inside God, it's pleasurable. When you sleep without knowing where you are. When you are talking without sense, you think it's pleasurable. The Lord says you are dead while you are alive. Or you think sleeping with woman, the energy, or I don't know how you feel. Maybe that feeling you feel after sleeping with her, maybe that's what you are, you are thinking that is pleasurable. And that woman is not your wife. If she's your wife, no problem. You are doing it because you are committed to her. You understand? But if he is not, there is no marriage there, you are thinking it's enjoyment. You are thinking it's pleasurable. But the Bible says you are dead while you are alive. Because you are, you are draining out your energy, number one. The Lord says you will renew that strength. You are not allowing God to renew your strength. The Lord will not renew your strength. Like I said at the beginning, the message is for people that are truly, truly, truly waiting on the Lord. So again, I also want to encourage us. Maybe you are also there waiting on the Lord for money. The Lord says He will renew your strength. He will renew, he will renew your strength. You know, I've used different examples now, but I've not talked about waiting on the Lord for money. The Lord says He will renew your strength. You might think, eh, I'm getting too old. I'm getting old. Look at me. If anybody know me in real life, nobody will believe my age. What does it mean? It means God is renewing my strength. If I have forcefully collected everything I needed from the devil, I will be looking very old now. I'm telling you. You know, there was a day I watched one video. In fact, I don't know why I went to watch that video. One man that I think his name are they doing or something like that. I can't really remember precisely. I shall know there are two people that are mentioning their names. One are they doing one? I don't. I can't remember the second one, but I think the the man should be are they doing. I went to see almost some of his. I saw that he just became sixty years, and this man can no longer work upright anymore. He's already using work. He sticks to work. That is it. When you don't allow God to do it the right way that you that he will do it and his name will be glorified. You will get hold too fast. Sister Yeshua is still very young now. 
go and look at many ministers of God. It's in their city years so that they have started flourishing in the in the work of God. While they were in their thirties, forties, they were still praying, God please lift me or God please let me find favor. But when they got to sixty, they started flourishing and they have the energy. Sixty years old man now because he have acquired all the wealth by force. He has school, he has polytechnic, he has um hotel. Maybe he has other things, I don't know. But those are the three things they mentioned in that statement. You know? He could acquire everything by force. Forcefully. And then they made him old very fast because he didn't wait on the law. So what is he trying to say? God will always renew your strength. I look at my hair many times. My hair is still intact. I mean the hair on my head. Some of my mates they are already having gray hair. I'm not mocking them. I'm just trying to explain to you that you have nothing to lose if you wait on the Lord. Everything you think you have not achieved, the Lord will supply everything completely. You will not lack anyone. We will not lack anyone. By the time God comes through and makes a way in this miraculous way, in a way that is not sinful. You know, I was using myself as an example. I said, I went through these things. So I want to explain one of the times that I was going through it with, for you. So that day, ah, there were options of sin. And I was like, ah, God, like, help me. I was like, okay, maybe I should do it. Maybe it's not really sinful. I wanted to convince myself <laughs> that it's not sinful. And immediately God started telling me, hey, don't look at these things. These things are small compared to the greatness I have for you. Imagine having a job of $500 now. You will live a good life to some extent. At least you will not lack like I was lacking because I was really lacking then. There was no money for food. There was no money to pay rent. I went through it honorably. You understand? You will lack just for a while. That's what the Bible says. It said, after they have suffered for a while, you understand? And you think, oh, 500 is, is good, is, is, is good enough to exchange for your integrity. It's good enough to leave the Spirit of God out of your heart. God started explaining to me, he said, when Joseph went through it, it was as if he would never come out. But did he come out? And I answered God, yes, he came out. He became glorious. The Lord said, I would do that for you and even more. You don't know how I'm going to do it. That 500, by the time I come through for you, it will become like cheeky change to you. Don't mess up yourself because of that chicken change. Many times, those money that those sugar daddies are giving you, if you refuse that money, the way the Lord will come through for you in the, in, with your integrity, when God comes through, you will see that you have more than what they are giving you. Those money they are giving you, to exchange for sleeping with their dogs, to exchange for for sleeping with snakes. Some of those girls, they say it's a snake that will sleep with them and they will give them money. Those money they are giving you to exchange with those things. The Lord can give you much more. You don't know that even those money that those men have, you don't know that God can give them to you. That is what it means. So God is encouraging us that the times of your waiting is not in vain. And it will not show in your life that you have waited and then you have suffered. The Lord will come through. The way God will do it, everything will be forgotten. Everything will vanish as if you have not even passed through those challenges at all. That is what God is going to do. We don't know how we will do it. But today God is just wanting to encourage us about our waiting time. That you have nothing to lose. Is it to wait for husband also? You are you are not losing anything. If the man that is coming is the one that wants you to sin against God, you have not met your husband. Especially if you are the type that you want to do the will of God. Some of you will say, eh, but people eventually get married to each other. So and and then we can still confess our sin and God will still forgive. Yes, it's true. God will still forgive. When Adam and Eve left the the Garden of Eden. They still lived several years now. Shabigo still gave them food. He still gave them water. He still gave them 
house to live, he still gave them clothes, he still gave them everything. But was that the original plan of God? For I'm talking this for people that will say, eh, even if we live together, we can still marry, we can still have a happy home. It's true. But that is not the original plan. Why can't we just wait for the original plan of God? Imagine Joseph slept with Potiphar's wife now. He might be living a good life in, in Egypt. You understand? Because that woman might fight for him. But the real plan of God that he will be able to save Israel, because if not that Joseph went ahead, Israel would have been destroyed. You know, that was a plan of God that somebody will go forth to first of all get there and take the land so that Israel can stay in that land and become great in that land before they go back to the promised land. Because if they were in Canaan, people might be attacking them when they start growing. Because the promise of God for them is that they're going to grow to become a nation. Imagine somebody in a country and, and they are becoming great, great, great. And these people are more powerful than them. They want to attack them like, ah, maybe they are going, they are their enemies. But if Joseph had failed, God might have created another way. You understand? But the real plan of God was that they were supposed to stay in Egypt because Egypt was like uh, a strong nation that can protect them. And they were protected. So it's just trying to tell you that there is real plan of God. Don't fail on that real plan of God. Don't go for the second and plan of God. Go for the first class. First class plan of God which is to wait on the Lord. Any option that is sinful, any option that is not the will of God, just say no to it. And wait for that one that is the will of God. May God help us. This word of God that we have heard today, His Holy Spirit that can explain it better to all of us. Because at one point or the other, some people will make calls to you, say, hey, do you want this money? Do you, do you, will you take this money for this option? Some girls, they will even say, will you send your news to get money? And you see how these men are embarrassing women online. They say, eh, if, we don't, eh, if they don't suck their private parts, I mean, the, the, the woman saw their private parts, how would they pay for their bag? How would they pay for their wigs? You see all the embarrassment? Imagine because of wig and bag, you are, you are defiling the temple of God. You are messing yourself up. And then the man still add the insults to you again. You understand? Let the bag go. Let the wig go. Thank God I don't use wig now. You understand? And you too, you can cultivate that habit of not using wig. Let the beauty of the Lord radiate in you. The man that has the fear of God, that has the spirit of God in him, he will appreciate that beauty. You don't have to use wig like your mate to prove to a man that you are beautiful. It's not necessary. You understand? You don't have... Let it go. Let that man that is suffering you those dirty things to give you money, let him go. The Lord knows how to bring people that will not mess you up. People that will not lower your standard, that will not make you sin against God before they bless you. The Lord knows how to bring them. So may God help us. You know, I can, I can continue talking and talking, but I'm leaving it for the Holy Spirit to really speak it in the perfect way because there's a perfect way God speaks to all of us. I'm sending out the Holy Spirit that is going out with this word to explain it in each person's corner, in each person's situation in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today's message. Oh Lord, you have spoken to us again in ways that will be the best to heal us Father, Lord, please come and heal us. Father, Lord, please help us. In this sinful world, we need your grace to wait on you. You have told us that when we wait on you, our strength will be renewed. We will not lose anything. You will recover everything back for us, even our strength, even our age. It will look like we have not even grown up at all. Father, Lord, that is your promise. Almighty Father, help us. Father, help us. Oh, Lord, give us grace. And I know it is the grace of God. I have someone to do the will of God. It's not easy. 
It's not easy. I went through it so I can tell people it's not easy. But the grace of God will always say, daughter, I will see you through. Son, you will overcome. My daughter, my child, it will not swallow you. Father, that is the grace of God. That is the voice of God. Father, Lord, let the voice of God go out. Let it speak to everyone. In those parts that they are thinking, maybe they should uh, lower the standard, maybe they should go into sin. Father, speak to everyone. Father, speak to everyone. Let the Holy Spirit speak to everyone. Let the healing power of God go out. Everyone that has even done it and is looking for ways to come out, Father, let the voice of healing speak to them that, oh, the Lord is still able to save, and from henceforth they will continue to do it right in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. I'm so grateful for this opportunity. You know, while I was praying, I felt the, um, what was it called? Like your body moving, like charging. I felt it. that was the power of God. It means this word is going out to bless people in the name of Jesus. And I too, may God refill me the Holy Spirit. May I not become empty in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Bye. So hopefully by God's grace in the evening, I will be able to do for today's own by God's grace. Bye.